Multicon Expedition, episode number nine, live on day three of Explore, and I'm here with David Linthicum. David, welcome. It's great to be here. Another exciting day. Yeah, David and I have had a number of good conversations with customers, a couple of uh, expert-led roundtables talking about the multi-cloud challenge. So we could probably start off right there and uh, recap, right? When we're here at the center of the multi-cloud universe, then we're really looking at uh, an environment that spans from the on-prem world all the way out to the edge. And so you've certainly talked to a lot of customers. What, what have you found they've, they've seen in the multi-cloud? I think multi-cloud is going to be all-inclusive of everything. So it's no longer just cloud brands that are bundled together. It is exactly what you just said. It's going to be edge-based systems. It's going to be mobile-based systems. It's going to be on-premise-based systems, autonomous systems. It's even going to be space-based systems, as I found out. Uh, lots of people are working on that. So really, it's going to encompass and include everything that exists exists within the enterprise domain that need to be managed, need to be secured, need to be monitored, and need to be accounted for. So get ready for that. Yeah. And we should mention there are so many people here at um, Explore that there's a lot of network traffic. And as a result of a lot of network traffic, um, our visuals are not always coming up. And so we're going to continue to kind of, you know, plow along. Uh, and with that, so from the multi-cloud challenge, right, a lot of it is, you know, customers going from a cloud first mentality into a cloud descending down into that cloud chaos We've heard that from a number of customers today yep. and so how do they go and tackle those challenges one thing that's super helpful is for customers from all over the world talk to a customer today from Colombia South America and they are coming here to learn from other customers and from experts like yourself on what you know what challenges can they expect are they experiencing the same thing as other customers are experiencing and so together, you and I pulled together from all of our experience um, 10 total challenges. We went through five of them the prior episode. That was on Monday. You can catch that pre um, as a replay. Today, we're going to go through an additional five customer challenges. So with that, let's go ahead and we can jump to the uh, the first challenge. And this challenge is, Leanne, you got to bring it a little bit closer. Thank you. My eyes aren't that good. <laughs> Increasing developer velocity. Speed application. Look, I'm going to put my glasses on now. <laughs> okay. All right. So something we heard about quite a bit was around how can they how can they speed? Oh, that even makes more sense. Makes a, that, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's we are of, engineers. It's a lot of fun being live at the, at a show. And so, challenge, customers saying, you know what? We have hit that complexity wall, and now our applications, we can't get them out as quickly as we want to. So, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ultimately, we're able to build applications now, what I call the speed of need. And so, with AI-based coders and release management systems and automated deployment systems, we can push things out very quickly. But we're finding that we may not be able to push things out because the infrastructure is not ready to accept the applications because we have no way to operate them at scale because the complexity of, this, of the target systems is, is going to be beyond the bounds of the folks in cloud ops that are able to run these systems. So that's, that's a core problem. So we have the capability to be great at something. We just don't have the ability to continue the greatness for many years to come. And so how do we solve that problem? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you've talked about having a common control plane, or in this case, a common application development platform, mm -hmm. right? And so VMware has got several different, several capabilities to help customers there, and a couple of our recommended sessions. One is around learning more about the Tanzu application platform, specifically to increase that developer velocity. And then the other one is about kickstarting that superior developer experience. So all things around application, speeding application deployment. Let's jump to the next challenge now. Okay, and good news, it's coming up over on our side, so, so we don't have to uh, ask for uh, visual aid to come in from the side. Um, speaking of visibility, right, we didn't have visibility into our slides, but thank goodness we've got visibility into the multi-cloud, right. and this is a challenge that customers have. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, 
This is about cross-cloud observability and your ability to see all things and not only see all data. You've got to remember, people would, in the olden days, meaning last year, would take massive amounts of information and try to view it in some sort of a meaningful way and realize that we don't, we just don't have the brain power to figure out what's going on, even with graphs flying around the screen, things like that. So it's visibility or the ability to obtain data from all these various point systems that are under management, but also the ability to apply observability, which means that we're able to make constant sense as to what that data means, and we're also able to put automation controls in there to react on the observability observations, be able to turn things down, turn things off, the ability to self-heal things, and ultimately, observability in conjunction with AI should have the capabilities of monitoring and management, managing 95% of what you're doing, removing the human beings, but also increasing reliability and availability. Yeah, and that, that uh, increased efficiency, reliability, you can't have that if you're that swivel chair administrator between yeah. multiple different consoles. No, and also observability is finally getting into looking at what all these tools are able to do and see, you know, see them in conjunction, the ability to have automation in between them. If you have tool silos within your infrastructure, that can be hindrance to productivity because, again, you need specialists that are able to operate those particular tools. They, they're typically not communicating, collaborating, so the ability to put observability on top of those and have uh, processes and orchestration that occurs between the tool sets and a multi-cloud environment across platforms is key to success. Absolutely. All right, let's jump to one of the next top challenges of customers. Uh, networking and security. Absolutely. We hear this over and over again, right? Uh, in fact, in our session, we were talking, about, talking to customers out there in the office. They specifically came in to hear about how are other customers dealing with securing in a consistent fashion multiple clouds. Yeah, ultimately security is only good as the worst protected platform that's on your network and people don't understand this. So they may have great security with one particular cloud platform but very poorly thought out security on another cloud platform. All of those systems have access to the network and therefore the bad actors can get in through the weakest link and attack the system systems that even you think have good security. So you need to think about security as a holistic and systemic thing as you build multi-clouds. And also it needs to be architected and planned you know, from the beginning. So it's not just throwing tools and technology at it. It's looking at what are the cross-platform uh, cross capabilities that we need, identity access management, encryption, and how are we going to manage identities across the platform? And how are we going to have a single common security control plane that exists in an even way across the various platforms so we can have outstanding security that runs across every platform that's in our domain. Yeah, that uh, you know that that brings to mind the weakest link, right? What you just described there was the weakest link in any chain in the security opens up an opportunity, and we've certainly heard a lot about lateral attacks, right? So if you've got that weak link in one cloud, um, uh, what's it called? Hackers can go ahead and move laterally to another cloud and then do a lot of damage. It's like locking your door and, and leaving your window open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. That's a great analogy. So, a couple of great sessions here at Explore that we, we recommend you check out. If you're if you're here, hope you can check them out. If not, you can catch these after the uh, after they've aired or after they've um, uh, aired, and then there'll be replays of them. All right, let's jump to the next one. Okay, this one, another big one on customers' mind, providing that secure access for better customer and remote user experience. And I always think of this one a lot as that identity management. And I, I hear that from customers saying, we've got multiple, multiple cloud properties, we've got challenges with identity and access management, making sure the right people get access and the wrong people do not get access. Right, you think about um, digital transformation is about extending the experiences or enhancing enhancing the experiences down to the customer level. And that becomes kind of another tier of security that we have to consider. If they're gonna have access to the platform, then they need to do so in a very secure way that lives up to the policies and security parameters that we set within the system. However, they're customers, so that you don't want to hassle them more than you need to. So the ability to have transparent and seamless security to provide access to these various point systems is an art form unto itself. So we need tools and technology that are able to make that 
happening. You've got to remember they may have one point of access that may go to multiple platforms. So there's a couple of layers of security you have to deal with. The layer of security that you deal with in the interface that's talking to the user, as well as the back end layers that are talking to the platforms. And so the idea is to find technology that's able to enable you to do that without a lot of complexity, without adding a lot of operational overhead. And you know that that access to the different environments, the different the different uh, multi-cloud applications, is also important to think about the user experience there, because the user is obviously number one, got to be granted access to it. Mm -hmm. But then they need an experience that can allow them to get to the right app at the right time from the device of their choice. And so in this case, another great session, right? Digital employee experience decoded. A um, lot hearing from a lot of customers about how to make that experience better, especially in a world where technology is moving so fast. Yeah, I want to make sure I watch that one in replay because it's extremely important that we understand how to do that because you've got to remember everybody is on their digital transformation journey. They want to include the customer into that journey and not lock the customer out, which is a good thing to do if you're a business that needs paying customers, but you need to do so in such a way that provides systemic security capabilities that doesn't necessarily hinder their ability to access your systems and leverage them properly. Yeah, well, that employee experience ends up coming right around. Absolutely. And the, the, uh, what we found is that the better the employee experience, right, the more productive they are. Yeah, and we learned this during the pandemic. So uh, everybody was accessing the systems remotely, and that's how it defined the systems. We had their employees that started to work for a company that may not have saw the inside of their building for two years, and their only way of figuring out their experience, whether it's a good experience or a bad experience, is, is through the electronic experience that the, the, that the company provides. Mm -hmm. And so we have to think a long and hard about how those experiences can be can created, the quality of them, and then all of the uh, operational and security parameters that come around them. So we need to take our game to another level in my experience. We have a tendency not to necessarily put the work into building those systems as well as we could. Yeah. All right, let's jump to the next challenge. So this is about being able to deploy consistent infrastructure across clouds. And so in this challenge, right, what we find with customers is it goes back to having that siloed environment. So the challenge is the siloed and the repeating theme here is that those silos create the complexity. That complexity slows down all IT initiatives for the most part. Yeah, the big test here is that as developers and users of a system, we shouldn't know exactly what cloud platforms or even on-premise platforms we're on. So in other words, they're able to serve up object data storage in, in a consistent way that's going to provide performance parameters and functionality parameters across platforms. We have a tendency to, in essence, build things around the capabilities of a particular platform that may not be the best to externalize to the application. So consistency, the ability to deal with storage as a composite of storage, the ability to deal with processes as a composite of processes, the ability to manage these things through this layer of abstraction, which is able to, in essence, bring the applications up as a first class citizen to leverage cloud-based platforms as true commodities, no matter what platforms you're leveraging. The other one that this kind of relates to is customers are saying, you know what, I'm having a hard time finding the people to manage all these multiple complex environments. And so that having the ability to do consistent infrastructure with things like VMware Cloud Foundation is actually a really big deal, especially being able to, to have uh, Kubernetes built into vSphere. So then it's taking modern applications and actually being able to deploy, operate them on-prem and or taking them to multi-cloud. Most importantly, with the existing expertise that companies have had, right, running the VMware um, stack for over 25 years. Yeah, we heard that today in the Meet the Experts uh, uh, sessions we were in. It's that uh, they're not only concerned about the complexity of the applications they're deploying, but they're concerned about the fact that they can't hire the skills they need to operate the various silos. So people are choosing to operate these platforms as separate silos within their IT infrastructure. And if you're going to do that, you need pros that have deep talent and knowledge about those particular systems. You're going to find that that won't scale because you're going to get more platforms, you're going to need more skills, those are going to have derivatives unto themselves, those sorts of things. So we need to deal with these platforms as common commodity services with cross-platform management, cross-platform security, and really kind of reducing the redundancy and therefore breaking down the silos, again by using abstraction and automation to look at the platforms in a very similar and consistent way.
Jumping to the, uh, that was, I believe, the, was that the last one? The fifth? Yes, look at that. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you here on site, as well as to join me for one of the sessions, and then also to several of the uh, Meet the Experts roundtables. So, for those of you that, that uh, weren't able to join, you'll be able to catch all of the replays of Explore and all the different sessions will be available afterwards. Um, if you have any questions, you're always welcome to reach out to myself, or you can post them in the chat, as well as I'm sure David's very active as well on uh, LinkedIn. Hit me up. Yeah, hit him up. So with that, we will say thank you very much for making the time to join us, as well as dealing with some of our technical challenges uh, here in a live environment. So until the next episode, have a great day.